This video is an exploration of whether a drill chuck can be self-tightening. For comparison purposes, I'm going to be using my old drill chuck that came on this drill probably when it was new. It's a 633C. The C part is this collar up here. And comparing it to a WEN keyless chuck that's brand new. I'm going to be using this drill and which is held in this wooden clamp and I'll be testing the grip of each chuck. I chose this drill because it's completely smooth. Uh, that's kind of unusual. Most drills seem to have a size stamping on them, but this had, had a very light etching and it's the smoothest drill I could find. Okay, this is all cleaned up with acetone. I've got the jaws retracted the collar is back on here and all the way up. Okay. And um, one of the remarks was you absolutely have to go around and tighten all three of the holes on these Jacobs chucks. And and I I was a little surprised. I thought, oh well that, that won't be necessary, but but actually I felt movement in all three holes. Not so much in the third one, but definitely in the second. All right, I've just about finished the setup. Uh, this is how the, how the belt is held in place, and I'm, I'm finding that that works. If I clamp the belt to the sides, um, then all I've got is just a little bit of wiggle where that six, I think it's six uh, tooth spline is. Okay, well, let's see. Okay, we'll try it again. Can we move it? Oh, okay, we got the same thing. I got the same thing yesterday. The Jacobs taper is where the slippage takes place. Okay, and that's still the case. Huh. Okay, I'm going to put the strap wrench on right there so it's on that collar above the the Jacobs chuck okay now did I get it there okay that's okay I'm gonna re-clean the spindle and the the win Chuck, this is a one sixty fourth to one half, um, and what's interesting is is that uh, some chucks do this and some don't. But you'll notice when I'm turning the collar, the jaws are rotating with the collar, and um, and that is supposedly what makes it self tightening. But we'll see if that works. But anyway, it's cleaned up. We'll see how well we can get it to set. And I've got the jaws back inside. Okay. There's the chuck. There's this. Okay. Now that's that's on this collar's back with the Jacobs chuck. It was the Jacobs taper that broke loose. Well, you can see those lines there fairly well. Okay, and this is the direction if it was drilling that it would have resistance. Okay, once again, it's the Jacobs taper that's that's broken loose. Now, now, one of the things I thought was that it might be difficult to tell when something is tightening rather than, than not tightening, but it should be very obvious when something's loosening. 
So here's going the other direction and you go just a little ways and it pops apart. And, and I figured that it's probably easier, it is easier, to prove something is self-loosening than self-tightening. And uh, the jaws are up. That should tighten up the Jacobs taper. And now we'll put in this contraption. And what I want to do this time is just tighten it just enough and just using two fingers to get it to tighten enough so it doesn't drop straight out to the table. Okay, and now you can see you can see the lines here on the shank of that half inch drill and I want to start turning it. And it's turning in the chuck to there, okay, and then it stopped. Went about maybe an eighth of the turn, and now it's tight, pretty damn tight. I'm hearing a bunch of creaking, but I'm not seeing any more move. Oh, there it goes. There's, there's the movement here, where it's where the wind chuck is meeting the Jacobs taper. And that's, that's always been the place where any motion takes place. But, but just two finger tight, it, it rotates in the chuck for about an eighth of a turn and then it gets tight. Okay, and then coming back the other way, well, it's also about an eighth of a turn and then it falls out. Okay, so it doesn't take, you don't have to really, when I was doing the other shots, I was really cranking on this, but that's not necessary. But it will move just a smidgen as it tightens. This is a quick shot of the chuck rotating, so you can see the amount of run out. This is a quarter inch Forstner bit running in the wind. Well, key takeaways. Um, I guess that it's got to slip somewhere. Uh, but it definitely seems to be true that this chuck is self-tightening and self-loosening going back the other way. Um, and that not all chucks are like that. Um, it's certainly the case that with the, the Jacobs chuck that was on there, when you turn the collar, the jaws stay still. And, and that's true with this. This is an old keyed chuck 120 volts and the jaws stay still. And once again, this is a Ryobi, not too old, somewhat old drill and its jaws stay still. Conversely, here is a rather antique chest drill. I don't know where I got this, probably from my dad's toolbox. And it is a three jaw chuck that apparently I didn't realize before, but it's a self tightening one. And, uh, and if you're drilling by hand, you'd want something that was self tightening, I guess. Maybe they never gave it a thought back then. And this one is also self-tightening. The jaws go around. What's a little unusual about this one, it wasn't unusual when this chuck, when this drill was made, is that this is a this is kind of a fancy thing. It's two speed and everything. But it's two jaws, they're self-tightening, and it's also sized on the inside so it can take square shanks. Uh, but it was self-tightening. And I don't know, maybe they got away from self-tightening when Jacobs came out with their chuck. What have we learned? Self-tightening seems to really work. 
Uh, it works whether you grab it with two fingers or your whole grip. Uh, the chuck, when I had it set up with a quarter inch Forstner bit, it looked like it was running very true, very little run out. Um, is it better than, than the Jacobs chuck that I took off? Well, I, I don't know that from a pure drilling standpoint, I'd say it was better because it, it also didn't have any slippage. Uh, the run out is okay. Um, some people like the fact that it doesn't have a key because they're afraid they're going to lose it, or they know from experience that they often lose it. And that's, I would be in that camp. I've lost keys for, well, it's a good excuse to clean up the workshop, isn't it? But anyway, uh, but I, in addition to not losing a key, one of the nice things about a keyless chuck is there isn't any possibility in the future that you're going to start the drill press with the key still in it. And although that's one of those things that you would think to yourself, oh, I would never do that, but but people do do it. And, and so it's sort of nice to avoid that. It's a very elegant package, kind of has a nice look to it. Um, I think the big mystery is the fact that the manufacturers of drill presses, like when they make drill presses and they make keyless chucks, and they don't sell any of their drill presses with keyless chucks. And I don't understand why that is, except maybe it's just tradition. And, and or maybe they figure they can sell you the drill press with the key chuck and you're going to buy the keyless chuck. Kind of like getting bigger wheels on your SUV. Um, I don't know, but uh, I'm going to leave it like this and use it and I think it'll be good.